So I'm gonna let you in on a little bit of a secret. I really didn't expect this truck build to take this long. I thought I'd be in and out of this in like six months. But what ended up happening was, because there was no deadline for this truck, because there was nowhere for it to go this past year, and be seen for the first time with no SEMA, no PRI, no Easter Jeep, no nothing, I ended up, every time I worked on the truck, if there was something that popped into my head where I just said, man, it'd be really cool if this truck had X, I put it on the list and then it got done. Now in the end, I know it's gonna be well worth it because the truck's gonna have everything I've ever dreamed of having in any of my off-road rigs. Even if it did cost me an extra couple months worth of build time, I think in the long run, it'll definitely be worth it. I mean, what else did I have to do? I'm just gonna sit around for about two months and drink coffee and maybe some bourbon. Could probably work on the Comanche. That's next. Today it's gonna to be all about plumbing on the bad old wagon. I'm gonna start with two of the biggest pieces, the radiator and the intercooler. Now these are universal items that I picked up from Summit Racing. I chose these because I'm pretty sure they are gonna fit the best. The bottom bracket is really simple, but it does mean I gotta fire up my fast cut CNC to cut it out. Before I fully commit to the location of both of these items, I gotta check for hood clearance. And with the hood in place, I can see that I have plenty of room. So I can start building some boost tubes. I'm using a universal two and a half inch pipe kit that I got online. It comes with a bunch of different two and a half inch aluminum pipes and some silicone couplers. Once I get them cut, cleaned, I will then roll a lip into each tube to ensure a good strong seal when it's locked into the coupler with the clamp. I started with the radiator and the intercooler because they take up the most real estate. And now that it's in place, you can see how the airflow is going to go. Air comes in through the air filter, through this pipe, down to the turbocharger, which is buried down here on the side of the R2.8. Gets pressurized by the turbo, comes out, goes across, gets cooled in the intercooler before it goes into the engine. The intercooler's job on the R2.8 is really just to make it the most efficient engine that it can. Remember, we're not hunting huge horsepower here. I mean, this is like 350 foot-pounds of torque, right around, you know, 180, 200 horsepower. But the intercooler will just ensure that we are good and efficient. I'm not 100% sold on the size of this air filter. It is a little small. Uh, I did check on the flow rate for it, and it should be enough to support this engine. But when I make the mount for it, I'm going to make the standoff big enough that if I want to in the future, I can go to a bigger air filter. One thing that I do have to do right now is basically add the mass air meter. The R2.8 comes with the actual mass air meter, as well as a pipe with a bung already welded in it. But that pipe, it was giant. It was three inches around and the air inlet for the turbo is two and a half. So I was gonna have a bunch of couplers here and I didn't, just didn't like how it was gonna look. So I went ahead and just chopped it off and I am going to weld it onto this piece of pipe right here. You do need to make sure that when you install it, it's in a vertical orientation. The instructions for the engine will tell you all that. But it's looking pretty good.
While I've got my Rebel ACDC doing work, this is a good time to make the required changes to my radiator. I know that the lower tube is going to have to be clocked differently, so I'm just gonna take care of that now. The reason I have to move that tube is because I plan to run a mechanical fan on the front of my 2.8. The Cummins R2.8 runs incredibly cool, and I just don't want the hassle of having an electric fan on the front of this truck when it's hardly ever going to be working. Quickdraw brand makes a simple kit that will adapt a standard thermostatically controlled clutch fan to the front of this engine. The main reason I like this, one less thing to worry about, and it just looks right having a mechanical fan on the front of a 53 Willys wagon. For the upper mount, I'm going with the old saying that if you can make one part do multiple jobs, well, you're winning. And in this case, the intercooler, radiator, power steering cooler, and AC condenser are all gonna mount using one simple lightweight bracket. There's a lot going on underneath the hood of this truck when it comes to plumbing, and I don't just mean the turbo piping. I'm talking about everything else that I've added to this rig. Biggest thing I got to deal with is my Vintage Air uh, Magnum unit that's inside. So I need to feed it refrigerant and engine coolant to do the heating and the cooling inside the passenger compartment. Now the way the AC system works, it's actually pretty simple. I'm going to have to build a line that goes from the compressor up to the condenser and that's going to be a high side line at that point the refrigerant is condensed by the air traveling across the condenser as it's sandwiched in between the intercooler and the radiator that refrigerant is then plumbed up and it goes inside the vehicle after going through a receiver dryer just to remove any moisture once it's inside that's where it changes it changes state basically it's going to go from liquid back to a gas when it does that it basically super chills the evaporator core that's inside the unit that you get from vintage air by super chilling that evaporator core the core gets cold then you blow cold air across it that's the cold air that you feel inside the car the refrigerant then comes back out and goes back to the compressor and it just cycles again and again and again and again now the compressor is obviously energized it doesn't run all the time it has a little fan clutch on the front of it and it has an electric wire that is turned on by the control unit that's inside and that is just the ac side of things now we have to talk about the heat for the heat inside the vintage air unit there's a heater core that's basically a tiny little radiator i have to take engine coolant from the r2.8 in this case off the front of the r2.8 is the outlet it'll come out and it'll go through this thermostatic control valve this is basically an open closed valve so when you request heat it allows the hot engine coolant to travel inside the vehicle goes through the heater core once again fan blows air across that heater core just like the radiator at the front of your engine it is basically going to move hot air inside the vehicle that's where the heat comes from these little thermostatically controlled heater control valves are super nice because when you turn the heat off it basically closes down it doesn't allow any of that engine coolant to circulate inside then i got to deal with you know power steering i got to get the reservoir mounted and go down for all this ac and heat i'm gonna have to put a bulkhead uh, connection up there on top. I've already got my vacuum line hooked up to the vacuum booster. The Cummins R2.8 comes with a small vacuum pump that's driven off the engine. That way you can retain the uh, vacuum assist brakes if you've swapped out a gas engine for this diesel engine. I chose this just because it works really well with my pedal assembly. And then I think that's, oh no, then I got to do steering lines. I got to come off the power steering pump over to the steering gear, 
return back from the steering gear, go through the steering cooler that's mounted at the front. You saw me include that on the bracket for the uh, AC condenser. And then I think, then I think the plumbing is done. Or at least the engine plumbing. I mean, I still got to do brake lines and some diff vents and some odds and ends like that. But I'm going to start with this heater control valve. And that's just a whole bunch of lines. Dealing with lines for an AC system used to be a huge pain, but Vintage Air now makes a do-it-yourself kit, so you can basically crimp your own AC lines in the shop yourself. Last piece of plumbing I have to deal with is the fuel filler hose for my TJ tank that I mounted underneath the rear of the body, and then I can start adding fluids to everything. With all the plumbing done now on the bad old wagon, this is a huge milestone. Now I know I say that a lot whenever I'm working on this rig, but this is a big one and you're gonna find out in a second. Whenever you're doing stuff like this, like all this plumbing, the best way to do it is just tackle it kind of like wiring, just one job at a time. So on this engine, I took care of all the air first. So that meant turbocharger, inlet, intercooler, boost tubes, then the coolant, so radiator, coolant hoses. Then I moved on to everything else, like power steering pump, a uh, vacuum line for the vacuum brakes, and then did all the interior plumbing for the heat and AC. I already had the fuel lines done, so that was pretty easy. But this is why this is such a milestone right now, because now that all the plumbing is done, and now that all the wiring is done, and I built this whole thing to run without any of the sheet metal on the front, we can go ahead and do this for the battle wagon. Now this is pretty exciting, I gotta say. Keys on, it's time to see if it starts. You know, that is pretty awesome right there. R2.8 running underneath the hood of the bad old wagon. It's a good day here in the big tire garage. 